In this video, I'm going over PFSense traffic shaping or quality of service in mini routers. This gives us a lot of abilities, especially when it comes to streaming and other things that don't choke our internet and gives priority to what we need. So before I get started on this, I just wanna say PFSense traffic shaping is basically quality of service in many other routers. So when I say traffic shaping and quality of service, they pretty much go hand in hand. I know it as QoS just because most routers in the past 15 years or so, that's how they've pretty much set it up as. Uh, I'm real familiar with like WatchGuard, Sonic, Wall, Cisco, and those types of GUIs uh, when it comes to routers. But for PFSense, they make it far easier. This used to be a very difficult thing to set up where you had to do like an ingress, egress and set those limits and then specifically put ports that you are actually utilizing and say, hey, all traffic on this port should be at this priority and all that. This kind of traffic shaping is just really especially in PF since has been dumbed down and it is far easier. So pretty much anyone can do it, which is fantastic because I can't tell you how many times I've seen botched QoS jobs and people that didn't understand the difference between quality of service and bandwidth management. So uh, real fast to touch on that bandwidth management and limiting bandwidth. A lot of people put these in their routers, especially when you see businesses and let's say you have a hundred megabyte line, both up and down and you put bandwidth management on it. What they do usually is do 10 to 30% per user and they basically limit all that bandwidth that that user can use on that, which is a horrible solution in my opinion. If you're paying for 100 megs, you might as well use 100 megs. So bandwidth management is just a bad solution in most instances. Now, if you have thousands of users and that type of thing, I totally get bandwidth management in its place. But for anything that's, you know, 20 users or less or 20 devices and less, you really should never use bandwidth management. You should only use traffic shaping and quality of service. With that said, let's go ahead and jump into our PFSense traffic shaping wizard. Okay, so let's go ahead and configure our traffic shaper in PFSense to prioritize streaming because that's what I'm mainly concerned about. If I'm playing a game or something like that, I want it to be just normal priority. But when I'm streaming, I want that stream to be as crisp and clear as it possibly can and be top priority. So that's my aim for my traffic shaper. Your aim may be, hey, your games need to be running flawlessly. If you're a competitive multiplayer, you definitely should you be using Traffic Shaper or your QoS in your router. So with that done, we're going to use the wizard to configure this right now. As you see, I've actually already configured some shaping rules. That is okay. This wizard will overwrite most of those rules, which is fine. So let's go into wizards and getting to traffic shapers just under fire, firewall and traffic shaper. So uh, hit, click wizards and I don't have multiple WAN connections. If I did, I would choose the top one. But for this, I'll choose dedicated. We're going to use one WAN connection. Um, for this, I'm putting LAN and WAN. Both of these I put PRIQ. It's a simplistic form. Traffic shaping, literally there's people that have entire professions on quality of service and traffic shaping and it is extremely complex when you get into many of these other ones like uh, HFSC uses like this bell curve and it's just crazy complex. I don't even quite understand all of it. I just know PRIQ is far easier to set up. It just sometimes can starve some of the low priority stuff. Uh, so if you have issues, you might take out some low priority things. But you do that and then you need to set your upload and download limits. I have 100 up. Uh, I'm sorry, 10 up, 100 down. Um, if you're unsure, you can always run a speed test through Google, just type network speed test and then test your line. Always come in just a little bit under it. When I did my test, my download came in at about 108 and my upload came in at about 11. So I like to shave about five to 10% off of the max. It gives me a little breathing room because if you're constantly pegging your max, you're gonna run into some problems with your internet connection. And it's far better when you got other users and you're constantly browsing the web to not max this completely out or put it above the max. So you always wanna come in a little bit below, can't emphasize that enough. So let's hit next. 
I'm not using any VoIP here. Um, penalty box, this is kind of as I said earlier about bandwidth limitations. I don't recommend limiters. I don't recommend doing bandwidth management. However, this I kind of like. Penalty box, let's say you have a troublesome teenager that's constantly doing peer-to-peer -peer stuff. I have no experience with that, right? Uh, so you could penalize this person, grab his MAC address for the devices he uses, put static IPs, and then put those static IPs right here, and then say, hey, he can only use 30% of the bandwidth. Pretty slick. Uh, we're not gonna do that because um, my teenager knows. So with that, we'll go on to the next step, peer-to-peer -peer networking. Always put a lower priority for peer-to-peer -peer networking as it is super easy to max out your uh, internet connection with this. I like to do catch-all and about 15% of the bandwidth. It seems low, but it's totally the norm. Uh, some people even put this in the single digits, which in a business, I would just disable peer-to-peer because -peer I don't want anything doing that and I don't want any nasty letters in the mail. But for this, I know everyone in my house knows not to do illegal music and the like. So we're gonna go ahead and enable this because I really like BitTorrent and downloading ISOs, especially for distributions in Linux. There's a lot of BitTorrents out there that are good. So we're gonna put 15%, enable BitTorrent. I could probably obviously just have it unchecked and the catch-all would probably go ahead and grab it all. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and do the catch-all and check BitTorrent. So from here, you can prioritize games. If you're doing any competitive, like StarCraft II or anything like that, and you're doing competitive gaming, I highly recommend coming in here and giving priority to that game. Or if you're big into like MMOs, like WoW and the like, you can also prioritize those in here. However, I game, but a lot of it's offline. And when I do MMOs and things like that, um, it's not going to starve it under normal priority. So I'm just not going to prioritize gaming traffic as it is not a concern of mine. However, it is of yours and you're having poor performance. This might help. you. So this is the main one. Step six, I really enjoy setting everything up here. MSRDP is RDPing into like Windows servers, which I have a few set up in this environment. VNC, I use quite a bit of mainly internet, like actual inside my network. I don't actually open up a VNC port to the outside because that's just crazy. These two, I always recommend doing high priority because there's nothing more aggravating than getting a remote connection set and then it's just inching along. So higher priority for remote services for sure. Uh, messengers, I pretty much leave all these except for Google Hangouts. I do some collaborations or have in the past with other YouTubers and Google Hangouts is a good one for video and audio. I want to be as clear and as concise as I possibly can in that Google Hangout. So I, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this as higher priority, everything else is default. VPNs, I highly recommend putting higher priority for IPsec. This is what OpenVPN uses and what I recommend. PT, or PPTP is an older VPN, which I don't think is very, very secure as it was um, because it is a very old protocol that I really just don't recommend using anymore when there's IPsec and better solutions on the market. Media and streaming. Um, iTunes and streaming MP3s I don't really care about. Uh, you shouldn't have any issues leaving on default priority. Um, RTSP and RTMP should always be at higher priorities. This is the bulk of like Twitch, YouTube streaming, all that real time streaming protocol and real time messaging protocol is what these stand for respectively. Higher priority is the best setting for these. I would recommend setting it if you do any streaming. Uh, web, you can set as default or higher priority. If you're having any slowdown on web and you have a bunch of people browsing, you might want to set this to a higher priority. However, most of this, I'm just going to go ahead and set as default. Game downloaders, low priority. They can take all the bandwidth at low priority, but at the same time, that's okay. If anybody else jumps on the network, I want to make sure these get throttled first because I'm downloading a game or something like that. That can wait where someone browsing the internet, I don't want them to have a bad experience because I'm downloading a game. That's just silly. 
Um, everything else default. Um, crash plan's a good backup one. If you use it, definitely set this to a lower priority because you don't want a backup service to overtake your internet, backing up gigs and gigs of data uh, and shooting it off site. So those other ones, I mean, if you use like a sling box, I remember setting up one of those like a decade ago. I didn't even know that was still a thing. Um, the rest of these I would just leave as default. And we're gonna hit next and finish. And this will go ahead and reload all our filters and we'll see the new rules in our firewall. Um, so if we go to our rules and we'll see in the floating tab, all the rules that were actually made. So you can actually customize these if you like. I highly recommend just leave them as default. Most of these are really good, unless there's a specific service, let's say like YouTube streaming went ahead and made like a custom port or something like that, and it wasn't getting caught in my traffic shaper when I needed it to be a higher priority, I would go in here and change that rule to incorporate that pro or that port so it could easily elevate that traffic and it would run above everything else. So with that done, um, this is just where you'd find the rules to customize if you need to tweak it a little bit, which you may, um, but that's where you'd find it. So another cool thing that I'd say, hey, keep an eye on is come back to your traffic shaper and then click right here for your little traffic shaper dashboard. This kind of tells you what's going on on your network and seeing what's happening. Right now I have a little bit of peer-to-peer -peer network, not much, uh, only a couple kilobytes, so nothing to you know write home about. But uh, these are all totally okay and fun to watch. Others high is where most of my RDP and streaming and other things are. So I would definitely take a peek at that on occasion. Um, but, you know, you can kind of just see exactly what's going on with your actual shaping rules that you've set. So uh, it's kind of fun to watch. But most instances, after about a week of trial and error, you won't ever come back to this page. And that was traffic shaping in PFSense. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments what you thought. And if you liked it, consider visiting me on Patreon and I'll see you in the next video.